welcome to the Audi Quattro Group S RS001 build, video 10. And today we're gonna go on the road. We're gonna go see John from Alcon and we're gonna pick up some brakes and we're gonna have a cheeky little tour of the factory. So I hope you enjoy. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Yeah, so what we're doing uh, on the machine behind me is we're machining in the caliper piston boards. So we set up two calipers in one go. As you can see, they're billet six piston calipers. And there's probably around, I don't know, 40 minutes cycle time for the pair of calipers there. Like I say, billet uh, six piston calipers. So you can see behind me here, this is where we machine our discs for motorsport and for fast road use. Um, I think it's fair to say Alcon have probably got the best discs in the market and have done for some time. So really close attention to detail in design, material specification and how we machine them. So you can see the machine behind me. Uh, it's not quite running at the moment. We're in between uh, setting up parts, but um, this is where the magic happens on discs. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our disc bedding service here. This is typically used for motorsport clients. So that's World Rally or GT3 type racing. And we've got various discs here ready, fully finished, to go on the bedding machine so that they can be heat cycled with a friction material of the customer's choice. So they're ready to go on the car. They're heat cycled. They've got a pad layer put on the face and they're ready to go straight out the box, straight out the pits for a hot lap. And obviously the reason we offer this service is because um, running a race car and a race team can be quite costly in engine hours, gearbox hours, tires, driver salaries, team guys, everything. So that's why we do this. So they're ready to go at little incremental cost really to the end user. So here we have uh, one of Alcon's CMMs, which stands for Coordinate Measuring Machine. And it's just checking a fixture here, so the probe will run around, pick out various uh, critical features or tolerances of this feature, and we use that for checking calipers. So everything we have, we typically check the first of every batch and the last of every batch to make sure they're absolutely to the drawing and fit for customers' needs. Right, we're here with Josh. Josh runs a dyno on the actual, uh, at Alcon. So Josh, what have you actually got behind us? So what, what do you actually analyze when you do a brake dyno test? Uh, so we can put different styles of discs and pads on the machine. Yeah. Um, we've got loads of sensors on the machine, uh, which measure temperature, uh, coefficient of friction, pressures, torques, push rod travel for the mass cylinder. Yeah. Loads of different aspects of kind of what you'd see on the car, but then obviously in more of a static environment yeah. on the dyno. So yeah. there's no like vibrations of the car or anything involved. Yeah. 
You can use these to check um, different characteristics of each disc, so you can change vent patterns, groove patterns, yeah, and get yeah, different yeah, yeah, yeah. outcomes, yeah. Uh, different pads we can try, um, anything to really improve kind of what the customer's looking for. Yeah, so um, I, suppose, I suppose every application and every customer's requirement is different. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. You could over engineer things, you could under engineer things, can't yeah, you? So, yeah, yeah. But with brakes, you do not want to under engineer things, do you? So. Yeah, we've got some good engineers here that just make sure you know the brakes are all up to a certain standard. And yeah. then after that point, they kind of can work there, like, yeah, you know, they like, get involved a bit and like change certain things yeah. to make them more fancy looking or perform better in certain aspects. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, um, what, what's, what's been the most craziest request you've ever had? for brakes or an, a brake um, application? I mean, it's not that crazy, but I've had a more recent thing of um, putting some road, road car pads through a motorsport friction test. Okay, yeah. Which is quite interesting, because usually the pads, they take quite a beat in, they get yeah. certain temperatures, they'll see certain friction and stuff on like motorsport, they get, there's quite a lot of laps involved, yeah. quite a lot of temperatures. Yeah. And these road car pads just literally were sparking like yeah, literally yeah, yeah, like, like yeah. nothing we've ever seen before. Yeah. Like they just couldn't handle it. Like they yeah. literally collapsed in front of us. Like it was quite, you know, yeah. entertaining to watch. But to be honest, it's going to be a lot safer making something yeah. fail inside here yes. yeah, 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 than yeah. on the road, isn't it? So yeah, it's nice being sat this side of the uh, yeah the chamber for sure. Definitely. Um, and so what uh, like our our car we're going to use we're going to have the Alcon brakes and stuff on it. What sort of maximum temperatures and stuff like that would you normally like to see on a rotor and a disc sort of combo? Um, so when I rode a vehicle, maybe like 400 degrees is like a yeah. peak, like kind of like if you're like pushing it relatively yeah. hard. Obviously in motorsport, yeah. things go up even more at that point. So they've got like yeah. 700, 800, 900 degrees. Yeah. See. Um, but yeah, road car, I'd probably say four, 500 is like your peak you're probably gonna yeah. get to if yeah. you're like pushing it very hard. Yeah. But also has um, to work from zero, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, it's, so you drive out the driveway. It's almost like the range of the temperature of what they work yeah. at is a bit lower than like motorsport. Yeah. Motorsport's like, you know, 300 plus. Yeah. Anything below that doesn't really work at all. Yeah. Whereas correct. road car, like, yeah. yeah. 20 degrees, like zero degrees up to 500 is kind of, it's like good working range. Yeah. After that, it'll probably start to decline quite sharply. Yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> right, well, we're going to open the door soon because there's a disc that's had an operation and um, we're going to show you through the dyno. So yeah, thank you very much. No worries. This machine is amazing. So what they can do here, they've got a, a series of sensors on the actual disc and caliper. And here, th these are disc deflection sensors. So this can actually measure the strength of the caliper and the disc under its operation. So different temperatures, different pressures, and endurance as well. And, and that will then tell them how far or how stiff or how large they need to make the actual discs themselves. And then you've got thermocouples for measuring temperature and thermocouples for measuring the brake pad temperature as well. And behind there, there's an EV machine that basically drives it. And that, that makes the actual road speed and the torque applied to the actual disc when it gets a hydraulic pressure put on. So it's actually nice and toasty and warm in here as well. So you can, uh, this is a place to be in winter, I think. So yeah, you get your sandwiches nice and warm, so. So this is one of the final inspections that we have for the caliper. We call it a high pressure test. So any, for any of the calipers here that have a lead plug system inside, so if they had the internal galleries for the uh, brake fluid, those are actually, when they're machined in, obviously they will leave a little port there, obviously where the tool will go into it. So we'll uh, block those ports at the, uh, at the point of them being machined. And obviously this is just a final test for those. So it will go into this test rig here. It will go up to 160 bar. 
and it'll have to hold that 160 bar for around 30 seconds. Obviously, at that point then, it will give you a pass receipt and it just ticks that final box just to say the calipers are safe to go out to the customer and obviously, and we have the full traceability then from start to finish as, as it's gone through the shop floor all the way to going out to the customer. Yeah. It kind of depends on the application and obviously where it's obviously being used and obviously and obviously what sort of tracks. If you if you go to places like say UK, take Donington for instance. Donington can be in certain areas can be quite heavy on the brakes. So obviously uh, off the top of my head, depending on say say like a GT car, sometimes you'll see line pressures of between like. 30 to 40 bar and, and stuff like that. So testing all the way up to 160 is like if you've got the Hulk pressing the pedal, but yeah. that that's the extremes we go to just to make sure that everything that's got our brand on it, our name on it is safe and can go out to a customer. Normally normally um, 30 to 40 bar is normal. And, and to be honest, that's what we get with our um, Pikes Peak car. And the only time I've had like up to sort of 80 and 90 bar, we're, we're about to have a crash. So, <laughs> so testing these calipers here with uh, 160 bar, we're never gonna see that. Otherwise it's gonna be a big crash. <laughs> so there's no hydraulic fluid in this, is there? While no. We're testing. No, so this system is purely just an air test. Uh, quite rarely we'll test with hydraulic fluid because yeah. one of the main reasons why we use air, it's nice, quick and simple, but also is if when you're testing with fluid, if there's any remnants left over in the caliper, when that goes out to a customer, if they're using a different dot fluid or it, 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 pads and fluid are very much end user specific. Everybody wants to yeah. use a different. Everyone wants to use something different. So obviously the last thing we want is anything to go out, potentially contaminate the fluid which yeah. they're going to use and obviously reduce that performance by reducing the wet or dry boiling point. So yeah. we test with air. Air is more than sufficient to get the pressures obviously we want to test to as we sim for the 160 bar. So that's how we test all of our calipers, cylinders, everything here yeah. in Alcom. Perfect. Perfect. Because as you said, everyone has a different sponsor or everyone yeah. has a different supplier of fluid. So, but would you also give a guideline of like what you would recommend for people to use? I suppose you get, because you get the calipers back for service and stuff yeah. like that, you can kind of see what fluid they're potentially using, can't you? Uh, yeah, sometimes. And, so when we had the calipers come back, obviously we'll strip them. Usually there are remnants of fluid, obviously, inside the calipers. Yeah. So obviously, uh, Typically servicing, obviously, we'll just get them back here, we'll put them into the ultrasonic wash, we'll clean everything out. Yeah. But uh, for a lot of our aftermarket kits, for instance, they'll be using like maybe dot four, maybe 5.1 yeah. for some of the aftermarket yeah. stuff. And what we tend to find then is obviously as you go into the higher end Motorsport GT ones, a lot of those guys are using things like Castrol, SRF, yeah. where obviously you, you want that really high uh, boiling point for the yeah. fluid. Yeah. Right, well, we've, we're out of the mayhem of the workshop and I can't stop putting this caliper down. I'm sorry. Do you like it? I love it. It's good. Absolutely it? love it. Mm. You can't believe the technology difference in a couple of years. We had the, uh, I met John and Alcon through um, Ray, the Pikes Peak car. And basically, you know, well, you can tell the history of Alcon and Audi. This is why it's law you should have Alcons on your Audi. Yeah, so we, thanks Dave, we started in 1983, so we're mm. 40 years old basically. Group B, Group B era. Group B, Audi Quattro, um, and we supplied discs for what was the Lombard RAC rally yeah. at the time. And then the following year in 84, we did calipers. So we've got quite a rich history um, not just in rallying, but with Audi and yeah. the original Quattro. So that was a long wheelbase car. Yep. And then as they got stumpier and kind of wider, mm. we stuck with them all the way through to the S1. So, yeah, we love the Audi Quattro, hence yeah, why we're perfect. excited to be involved with your programme. But, yes, what you had on um, Ray was... was uh, a little bit older technology than yeah. this worked really well yeah. but yeah what you've got there that's the front that's the rear is the latest and greatest almost as pretty as you mm, you're such a <laughs> such a charmer <laughs>
But now, nah, look, I'm really excited to get these on the car, to be honest. And like, the the joy is, is like, when when I originally pro approached um, you guys, it, it was quite an easy process, really. And the main process, it's all good just saying, oh, I want some calipers for my car and uh, I'm gonna race really fast. I'm gonna drive really fast. But there's a lot of science behind this. And that's the joy of working with, oh, shoo, shoo, shoo. Sorry, snoop the shop dog. Um, there's a lot of science behind what you should be actually adding to the vehicle. And I think that's where you guys can step up and help out really, so. Exactly. You know, I got a massive questionnaire from you guys, <laughs> had to fill it out. What Did are you, you gonna lie? do? Sorry? Did you lie or make I had it to, up? I might have had to get somebody else to spell <laughs> the big words out to yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, t we typically ask for the mass of the vehicle, the wheelbase, the height of center of gravity uh obviously wheel diameter that kind of thing so we can understand what the vehicle um is like uh from a static perspective but also do some modeling so that we can understand um what the brake sizing requirement is yeah. under braking yeah and that's what you need to do because otherwise you end up with brakes that's too small or too big if they're too big they never get warm they got terrible feel yeah. so yeah. right sizing is critical to the performance yeah. of a race car bigger isn't always better david apparently so apparently so <laughs> and and that's what we've been trapping on about this yeah. whole build really is because it's no point carrying passengers and it's no point having something that's light duty for the for the job you know that ain't going to perform under its proper conditions really. And one of the questions when we first went down this road was, um, you also have like a historic range of calipers, don't you? That that look a bit more old and period perhaps of like, yeah. you know, in, you know, not, not so much like 80s or whatever, but like older versions of calipers and stuff. And and, and I think your, what was your exact comment? It was some well, of your... Go on. Something along the line. So if you're going to do it, you might as well do it bloody properly. And, yeah, uh, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. So yeah, um, I, I asked you the question, Dave, because obviously we've been talking about this car for a couple of years now. And it was a case of what do you want the car to look and perform like? Yeah. And I think it's the look and the feel yeah. of the period 100%. car when it comes to chassis, i.e. dampers, brakes, etc. Yeah. You wanted modern performance. So yeah. you want a vehicle that is going to look the part. Um, that's that's not my stomach and that's... No. It's not the puppy dog drinking. It's buddy drinking yeah. water. But you wanted a, a car that absolutely looks the part, looks period and correct, but performs. Yeah. Because whether we like it or not, it's interesting. I remember when Group B finished, mm. which was a sad, sad mm. time. Mm. And Group A was introduced. Yeah, sure. And we yeah. saw these like skinny Lancia Delta Integrales yeah. that sounded awful and yeah. looked pathetic and everything. Yeah. I think within 12 months of Group B finishing, Group yeah. A cars were quicker over yeah. the stage. Yeah, yeah, so true. And so yeah. we, we looked at that and we thought, mm. well, how is this progress? They're not yeah. angry, they're yeah. not snarling, yeah. they're not spitting flames. But yeah. But that was in the 80s, in the yeah. mid to late 80s, yeah. and cars have got so much quicker through the 90s and the 2000s that to have a Group S Quattro look the yeah. part but go, yeah. it had to have something modern on. So yeah. long story short, I think that's why we thought, right, okay, we'll hit you up with the latest and greatest yeah. so that grumpy... Mm can strut his stuff. Mm, bring it on. On the track. Yeah. Because things yeah. have moved on, haven't they? They have, 100%. And you, you you just have to look at the stats of like an old Group B car, and an old Group B car was perhaps five, 600 horsepower, and the modern world rally cars nowadays are less than that, and they're loads quicker. Twice as Everything's quick. Everything's way more efficient, aren't yeah. they? And there's, there's, you know, like... That's why there's no weight in this and, you know, um, yeah, and they kind of look like they look and, yeah, it's everything just moves on really. So exactly. for me, 
I, I love the technology and I love working with like you sort of guys to like promote or not promote, but just your enthusiasm for what you make is very infectious and we love it. And, you know, we hope to, you know, fly the flag and have some fun and yeah, I'll let you know when we get it running. We'll come do some track days. I might not let John drive. But I was just about. I've to seen say. him in a drift car, <laughs> and I remember, remember the headlights fell out. <laughs> we don't fell. Talk, we don't talk about that. And then, and then, headlights fell out. We had to put cable ties in, <laughs> and then. Um, but it was a drift car. That's my wife wondering where the dog is. Probably not wondering mm. where I am, but you know. But yeah, that was that was no, good fun that day, wasn't it? It was great fun. But uh, yeah, no, everybody at Alcon wants to be involved in this because yeah. it's you and we yeah. like you, but it's yeah. a quattro. It's back to our roots. Yeah. Um, we're in our room that we call Pike's Peak. Yeah. We've got the great yeah. Reese Millen behind us. Yeah, lovely. Um, King of the Hill. Yeah. You're planning on taking Grumpy yeah. to Pike's 100%. in 2025. Yeah. That's we'll be there be the rooting plan. for you, but yeah. everybody. I think it's. I think it's a cool story because everybody at Alcon is hugely passionate about yeah. the Quattro, and you saw the banners. I think downstairs yeah. with our, you know, that was from when we were thirty. Yeah. And now we're forty, so I don't know where yeah. the last ten years have gone. But yeah, we wouldn't miss this it happens, for the world. John, it happens. It happens. Yeah. So you age. we've got uh, the latest and greatest monoblock six piston uh, front, four piston rear calipers. Ultra light weight, um, two six one eight alloy with an ENP electroless nickel plate finish. Uh, they're asymmetric design. There's heavy pocketing. Uh, piston sizes are to suit Grumpy pad area. Likewise, we pay particular attention to pad work rate mm. per unit area, so you get that feel. Um, and they will work fantastically well we got discs to suit and you'll be yeah kitted ready to go we're very proud to be involved yeah thank you very much and that that's you know you mentioned like pads and pistons are designed to suit mm. that's one of the thing that gets uh, matched up when you go for the complete braking solution that we have done because um, I wasn't even allowed to buy master cylinders. I wasn't allowed to buy anything. Basically, these guys told me what I had to get and told me what to use. Didn't you? Uh, you're making it sound a bit bossy. but no, uh, They are. They're very bossy. Um, but it's all for the good result. It's all for the greater cause. Yeah, we... we, we There's no point. Like, you, you could look at ca some catalogues and stuff like that, and you, but you want the proper advice, don't you? You've to, had the full service. The yeah. You've yeah. had the full service. Yeah, and. Uh, that's yeah. what we wanted to do for you. Mm. It's unusual for us at Alcon HQ to give that to yeah. a privateer, yeah. but obviously we've we've worked with you for quite a while, yeah. and we understand, you know, as well as the the, the relationship we have, the historical yeah. importance of the yeah. Group S car. Um, but yeah, that's what we do, and obviously for World Rally teams or GT teams, or whatever, we we start with all the data. Mm. Obviously, they actually fill it in. They don't oh. guess it or make it up. <laughs> Not like me. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> that's that's just what we do. Mm. But, um, yeah. Can't wait. I want to get back home now and bolt these on now. So. What are you going to bolt them on to? <laughs> <laughs> I've made the bells and discs. Oh, have you? Yeah, I've made the bells and caliper brackets. So that was something they also done as well is, is because... They had the AutoCAD drawings of the actual parts. Yeah. We scanned the hubs and then we got um, some brackets CNC machined and some um, bells CNC machined as well. So it won't be long before I good. get home and these will be on the actual car. So Good. Yeah. That's great. And you had a good look downstairs. Yeah, good look. Good run around the dyno. I love the dyno. It's cool stuff, isn't it? Oh, those little brake deflection. I thought they were temperature sensors. He goes, no, no, they're to measure how much the rotor bends. He might have shown you too much. Yeah, well, we may have to put some blurry bits on things. but. And you, you saw know. the um, the OEM cell where I think we had a monoblock six-piston caliper yes. that was on the machine that was having yeah. the balls put in, uh, which you followed being inspected. Yeah. So we were checking 
the depth and the concentricity of the uh, bore and the seal groove, which is obviously yeah. um, very tightly controlled here, and then go through the, the wash tank. So you've, you've seen bits, which is great. We weren't allowed to go in the lab. That was disappointing. There's a lot of Dexter stuff going on in there. And, um, but the thing is what you don't get as well, that is one piece. There's no through bolts through that. No, it's monobolt. So if you have to machine those pistons on the inside of there, yeah, then you go yeah. in here and you go in with a right angled head. So it's essentially got a gear in it, like a differential, I guess that kind of thing. So you can go in and cut yeah. at a right angle head, early calipers. But there's when holes we all, everywhere, isn't there? On the, yeah, exactly. The early path. calipers, when we started this, we just used to go all the way through. Yeah, I remember and then that. Cap yeah, it. they had a cap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I think some motorcycles still yeah. have. Yeah. Um, but things have moved on. Is that on. for cost? Is, yes. Well, they didn't have the machines, I suppose, did they? Well, to... you do it at home with your pillar drill yeah. and just send it straight down. Yeah. I'm joking. Don't um, tell that at home. <laughs> yeah. So, no, we, we, we invested heavily in five axis machinery to produce this body and right angle head machining to get in and to cut those bores mm. and seal grooves. But yeah, it's pretty sexy. So mm. uh, extremely lightweight, very stiff caliper. So you'll have a good brake pedal. You won't get much deflection, but it's interesting because Pike's Peak, obviously people say, well, it's just a hill climb and you're just going up a hill. But as you know, how many times have you done it? Six, four times now. Four. Um, the centre section, the W's, is absolutely brutal. You can make up so much time in that mm. area when you've got such confidence in smashing that brake pedal, it's going to work every time. Exactly. It's uh, a series of W's, yeah. S-bends. Yeah. It's a bit like the Turby, I think, in Monte Carlo, yeah. where you're going up, not down. Yeah. And obviously, because the air is so thin, you've yeah. got yeah. very little cooling, so you've yeah. got no oxygen up there, so yeah. things overheat. So. Yeah. You've absolutely got the right uh, product for the job here. We've got castellated pistons on the front. Um, so they help um, yep. have air. Get some airflow for around it. Exactly. Yeah. You've got a similar design on the back. We've actually got drilled holes on the yeah. cap there. But it's the same deal. So, you know, th there's been a lot of thought that's gone into this yeah. for yeah. you to do your... Do the best we can. Run at Pike's Peak and um, fly the Alcon flag. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the outright la uh, record holder there is Alcon equipped. Now we're going to have the outright Mr. rally car. Roman Dumas. Roman yeah. Dumas. And we're going to have... But that was EV. We've... Dave Rowe. He's going to do the rally record. It's going to be the starter motor to start starter the Starter motor. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so that's where it's at. Mm. And it's interesting as well, again, grumpy going back there. I know. It's all tarmac yeah. now, but obviously yeah. the Quattros were big there. 100%. Uh, with the S1 when they took them with the wild wings. Yeah. So, it's not, it's, so, again, this is part of what we want to get involved with. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to start using the car. And, and, you know, we've got so much good that's come out of these videos that people have approached us for doing like different events and whatever, but a bit, I mean, I can't let on what we're fully doing with it, but it's going to be great to see what people think about a new version of an old car is going to be like, and we love it. We love the technical side and thanks for letting us show, show us around the factory. I know you're Pleasure. busy on a Monday, uh, busy, every loads day. of meetings, loads busy of, every day, uh, busy every stuff. day, busy every day, but that's, uh, yeah. that's all good fun. But no, thanks for coming over. And if anybody wants to take a look at our product range, obviously, yep. alcon.co.uk. We'll put the uh, link in the magic bit. Yeah. Uh, we've got various dealers and distributors mm. um, all over the world so that guys can mm. you know, find whatever they want. And obviously, we're always here to talk. But all your dealers aren't just... They're not just like fitters and money grabbers, are they? They're all like fellow like-minded petrol heads aren't they we, that no one understands stuff don't they yeah we so, tend to try and uh align well. ourselves yeah well with guys who who understand the product yeah. and customer needs you know yeah. because it yeah. is 
at the end of the day, these are a safety critical item. It's all well and good going quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. But um, yeah. they are yeah. they are safety critical and all. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's one thing you potentially overlook with any sort of motorsport, isn't it? As you you never think, ah, oh, yeah, she'll be right. Yeah, but, <laughs> but doing what you do, <laughs> it's probably first on the checklist, isn't it? Is <laughs> make sure nobody, you know. Yeah. Hurts so it's it, no, yeah. it's it's important stuff. You saw the QC lab. You had a good look around there. You saw the CMM. Really you saw right, how yeah. we measure stuff. Yeah. How we just pay so much attention to um, the critical features, critical dimensions of a caliper, yeah. or a master cylinder, or a pedal box. And that's really what what helps distinguish us as one of the best yeah. brake yeah. or specialist brake and clutch brands yeah, when you, worldwide. When you, when you get your little sticker past. <laughs> past 16 to the second, 23. I'm going to put one on you, I think, actually. What, past? Yeah. You're going to sell I by date. I wouldn't measure me, mate. <laughs> but no, nah, it's good. It's been fun. So, yeah. Thank you very much, John. That's my pleasure. Thanks for coming up. Good and, to see um, you again. Glad that puppy dogs have not, you know, eaten each other. And uh, yeah, you are going to let me have a go, though, aren't you? We'll, we'll get just cut. Get back on that one. <laughs> of course, I'll let you have a go, John. Thanks. I've seen you in action. So yeah. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Right. These are the discs for the vehicle. So, this one's a rear. Um, the fronts have already been pre-bedded. So, as you're seeing by the machine down at Alcon. So, we just got to put in the... Uh, what you notice with the disc as well, see how you got vented slots just in here? They'll go a certain way, okay? So, um, this will dictate whether it goes onto the, the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the car. And what that allows the air to do is, as the disc rotates, the centrifugal force will be dragged from the inside of the disc, of the air, and then this will then allow it to vent out um, via the top of the disc. And so, if you see, like most motorsport discs have all been optimized for this um, radius that they put in there for it to do. So you've got to make sure you put the right on the right and the left on the left. And then what you've also got as well is like you've got these other grooves here on the side and they, what, what they do is when, because the brake pad's quite long and a large surface area, an extreme temperature you get like a, a layer of gas build up in between the actual pad and the disc. And these grooves are basically to get rid of that gas. And then it just allows the pad to, uh, uh, or the, you know, like the, the gas to be expelled. And then you've got a nice bite on the disc all the time, really. So yeah, that's, that's why that's like that actually. So let's put this on this way. And so, this disc is uh, basically a floating disc as well. And so this, this is what you have that bolt onto the wheel. And then you've got these little tiny bobbins to allow you, there you go, zoom in. All right, little tiny bobbins. And then these basically slot in there and this allows the actual um, disc or the wheel bearing to move without moving the disc. So it keeps the disc in contact with the pads. So, because what happens is, is when you go, when you go onto a corner, the, the, the load on the tire and the um, disc sometimes like deforms the wheel bearing slightly. And when it deforms the wheel bearing, it, it sort of bends a bit. And so that bending with this massive disc levers the pads back. And so when you go to go on a brake pedal again, you have a longer pedal because you've, you've pried the, you push the piss, the um, brake pads back. And then you have to, when you push your foot back down again, it, they have to come back onto the pad. So that's why you have a two piece disc or a disc and a bell 
with these floaters in it. So the, this, this inside part gets flexed, this bit stays in contact with the pads and that's it really. So, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll just pop one on here. And so it's got special nylon, or not nylon, but lock nuts, which are all metal, which um, basically stop the, these from coming loose. And you've got thin washers for weight reasons. And then that's it. So pop that on. So I always pop one down the bottom. And then this goes on this way. Like so. Wash out. Nuts. And that's it. We'll repeat the process for the rest of them. These have all got like a little part number written on them. And so I'm trying to face them all the same way, but I'm gonna leave one the opposite way because I have a friend called Will at VRS and he's got massive OCD. And this will prove that his OCD, he'll come around and change his bolt when I'm not looking. And this will also prove that he's like watching my videos if, he's, if he is. So yeah, we'll see. So these are the caliper brackets that we've had CNC machined. Now they're both like, cause the, the motorsport calipers that were got, the, the lugs are in a certain position. They needed to be moved a little bit. So um, basically they're both like radial mount really. So the, it bolts up to the hub here, bolts up to the disc here, oh, sorry, to the caliper. So these just bolt into the side. Do, do, do. So we had all these like pre-made beforehand, so it helps us speed up the process a little bit. So, and then the disc, this is the front disc. These have been pre-bedded. Remember the bedding machine that we had in the factory? So these have had like a layer of friction material from our brake pads already put onto the disc. So I should be able to hit turn one at maximum speed without bedding my brakes in really. I, that service to me is quite a good service really because to run this car or to run any race car in anger, you've got track hire fees, you've got race fuel, drivers, well, I don't get paid, but uh, if you're paying a driver, crew, engineers, just to bed brakes in, it seems a bit pointless really. Like why wouldn't you, you know, if that service was offered a, offered to you, you'd certainly take it up really. So we did. So this just bolts on like so. And then caliper wise, obviously you got different size pistons here. And basically the small piston needs to go down to the bottom because the when the disc rotates around, um, this even out evens out the pressing of the pad onto the disc. So that way across the, across the surface of it, it's all the same really. So yeah, just bolts on there. Quite sexy these, aren't they? So that's it. So we've got the brakes on the car now. Well, not all of them, but I'm sure they'll have to come off again because I still got to put drive shafts and stuff like that on. So there's still a bit, bit more to go for assembly of the brakes. 
Um, we've got the master cylinders there for the pedal box as well. So I just need to work out uh, which side is going to go for the front and rear and then all the pedal box can be assembled. And then once that's done, we could then make the rest of the fuel, oh sorry, fuel, the brake hoses for the vehicle. And so that's about it for the brake system. We're gonna be pretty much there after that. And then we can just add the fluid to it as well and then bleed them up and stuff like that. So, but I'll put the fluid in last cause I don't really wanna make a mess at the moment. Uh, also we've got more parts to the oil system added to the vehicle. The oil filter is mounted to the chassis as well and the oil tanks mounted into the car as well. And I'm kind of gearing up to get all the fittings and I'm gonna draw some diagrams ready and uh, we're gonna have racing lines down hopefully soon and then we can start plumbing up the water system and the oil system. And then after that, I just need to build up some motivation to do the wiring loom, I think. So yeah, that's gonna be a long one. So yeah, but please, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something, because we all do. And uh, hope you have fun building cars, because that's what it's all about. So enjoy. The steering wheel's on as well, I've noticed. Oh uh, yeah. And we got rid of our eBay OMP jobby steering wheel and we've got the proper one on now and it, it looks a lot better i have to say so it should be nice it's nice position for the gear lever and yeah it's quite period it's not a suede steering wheel either it's, it's a traditional like leather one so i need to make sure that we can get on with that when we're trying to drive it and you know pretend we're group s drivers i don't know how that happens but you know we'll try so yeah but otherwise we might get it like covered in suede and then it's like the normal steering wheels that we use. So, but yeah, everything's happening. It's all progressing. And you know, there's little, little challenges that hold you up, but it's all gotta be done. So we'll get it done. So yeah, thank you. See you soon.